Arizona basketball looks the part, and this could be maybe Tommy Lloyd's toughest team. What can we take away from their game? This, What could we take away from their previous basketball game? You are Locked On Wildcats, your daily podcast on the Arizona Wildcats. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for keeping it locked on, Wildcats, and making this your first listen of the day. I am your host, Mike Luke. All right, this show is brought to you today by FanDuel. Again, p- uh, place your first $5 bet, and you'll get started with $200, uh, $200 in bonus bets. Guaranteed. Visit FanDuel.com to get started. Okay, now, let's talk some Arizona basketball, and the Wildcats look the part. Now, um, there's been, listen, I think Tommy Lloyd is an A-plus coach, I, or I think he's done an A job here, and I hope that Tommy Lloyd is here as long as he wants to be. He is, uh, he's great. He's great in the community. He's just a great fit. And but this past, uh, there's a couple. There's been a couple flaws that I've thought that uh, is the uh, is kind of in his uh, in his repertoire. And the first one is is that I think you know midseason accountability not always the greatest thing. And the, he needs players that can get plays off the bounce, and he needs players that are tough. Well, it looks like all three of those might be uh, situated here. Let's talk Trey Townsend first. Trey Townsend, and, and again, Keyshaw Johnson was a good basketball player. Do not get me wrong. He was a very good basketball player for Arizona. The problem with Keyshaw, though, is that Keyshaw offensively was just somewhat limited. He was, uh, and when Arizona really needed a bucket, Keyshaw just wasn't ever going to be that guy that could just get you a bucket. He just didn't really have that in his repertoire. Um, and But again, he was definitely better. He showed that he could shoot the three-pointer. Um, you know, he was, a, he was a good basketball player for the University of Arizona. But still, again, like I said, somewhat limited in everything that he could do. Trey Townsend will probably not be the defensive player that uh, Keyshaw Johnson was, but Trey Townsend is even... Trey Townsend is going to be more impactful. Now listen, everybody saw the three-point shooting. That's for uh, that's an homage to all you spacers out there. The three-point shooting obviously looked very, very good. Um, but the thing with Trey Townsend, he can get you at a lot of different angles, and I think that's what's uh, I think that's what's impressive. Now, with the uh, he can, uh, he can make the three, he can get you from mid-range, or he can get you around the bucket. And that's where, uh, I think that's where all of this is interesting. Where exactly can he get you? And I, uh, Arizona hasn't had a guy like that. And it's, again, as good as Azulis Tabellis was, Azulis Tabellis was a guy that was, again, somewhat limited here in that he wasn't, he couldn't dribble the ball really. Townsend can dribble the ball a little bit and kind of get his own while he's at it. And I think that's what's impressive about him. And I think you're going to see massive rebounding numbers from him. And I think that's what's, uh, I think that's what's something that's very uh, exciting about all of this is the rebounding numbers that he's going to be able to put up. He's uh, And honestly, there's going to be a lot of nights where he is the best player on the court. And not only is he the best player on the court, he is the, uh, he is the best player, um, you know, that is going to be on the court for either team. And he's cerebral. You can just tell he's been around. And one thing that I would just love about him, too, is that I don't care at all about the people that are like, oh, well, you know, he uh, he played at uh, Oakland. He balled out against really good teams. You saw that. You know what you see. Don't let your eyes fool you on something. You know what you saw out there. This dude is good. And not only is this guy good, he's going to be really good for Arizona. So, um He's a difference maker, and Arizona didn't have anybody like him last year that could really make plays. Then, also, Tobey Owaka. Arizona did a great job with this uh, squad of getting players in here that are tough, physical, and have girth. And Tobey Owaka is that. Doesn't he just feel very much like the Houston, like a Houston uh, big man? And... Not only does he feel like a Houston big man, he feels like somebody that would be about, you know, six foot six, six foot seven, six foot eight. He's going to uh, nobody's going to push him around. He's going to score. He's going to dunk on you, and he's going to do look to do a lot of different things. He's good. He is really, really good, and he is a great, great option off the bench. It's exciting to see what he could do. Uh, heck, maybe he starts. I don't know, but. 
it can be a lot worse than having Tobey Awaka and Trey Townsend as your starting big men, that's for sure. But he was as advertised. Uh, big shout out to Jack Murphy on him. Everything that he said about him was true. And I don't know that you could uh, sit there and not be very impressed by everything that you saw from Mr. Awaka. Then at the uh, point guard spot, Jaden Bradley. I love Jaden Bradley. Jaden Bradley is the man. Jaden Bradley, I think, is going to be the best defensive point guard in the uh, uh, the best defensive point guard in. Uh, uh, the Big 12, which is saying a lot. And again, I see him as a Jamal Shedd type. I think that he can be 11 points, five assists, three or four rebounds, something like that, but also play really, really good defense. I like everything that I see about him. And when I watch him, I also can see that he's a game changer. I mean, what did he have? Two or three steals to start out the game? He was absolutely, uh, he was absolutely remarkable out. And He's a player that is only going to get better. I'm excited to see. He's got the he's got the uh, the keys to the castle this year, and it's going to be exciting to see what he can do for the University of Arizona. But watching him get out in transition, watching him make plays, he's going to be a good he's going to be a good one. Now Caleb Love's going to be fascinating because Caleb Love, we all know that Caleb Love can score, but now he has help. Now he has other players. Now he has other players that can have. Uh, um, that can, you know, really help him out there. And he can actually focus on maybe being a backup point guard from time to time or being able to, you know, getting to the hoop, being more efficient, things like that. But he's got some help this year. And I think that's what's exciting if you're a fan of uh, Caleb Love is that he's not going to have to do everything himself. I'm excited to see, can he shoot 46% from the field, 45% from the field? I don't see if there's any reason why he can't. And we know that, and again, I know that he struggled in March. I get all that, but you know, he also had a lot of big minutes for Arizona. So that part's very enticing. Then you get KJ Lewis. KJ Lewis just reeks of being all big 12 defense before going off to the NBA. I love KJ Lewis. Um, whether he's attacked the hoop. Uh, he's just a tough guy that people teams need. You need players like KJ Lewis. If you get players like KJ Lewis, you're going to win a lot of games. But man, that that starting five that they rolled out there, that was a dynamic starting five. That was a very dynamic starting five. Now, in a second, let's talk about and in a second here, let's talk about the players off the bench because I think that's going to be Arizona's next uh, next big uh, thing. But first, ROY. Okay, here's the deal with ROY uh, right now. The great thing about ROY is this. Download the game, download uh, the uh, ROY now, and join the NIL game with new subscriptions and no, with no subscriptions and no fees. And here to check out, check them out on Instagram, Facebook, and X at ROI underscore return on you for more information. ROI is great, like I said. Here's the deal. Um, you can have, you can go out and you can support directly to somebody that you actually support. So far this season, they posted or they pulled over uh, $10,000 to support players on ROI. Micro deposits lead to massive changes with the ROI app. You can direct your uh, your support and uh, to the athletes you love, treasure, and all the funds. Check it out again. ROI. Thanks for keeping it locked on, Wildcats, and making this your first listen of the day. I am your host, Mike Luke. All right, now let's talk about uh, the uh, the bench. Carter Bryant, he's not going to be here very long. Uh, Carter Bryant is fantastic. You watch Carter Bryant. You watch how he uh, he gets out on the court. You watch how he makes plays. Some guys' games are just a little bit better suited for the uh, NBA. Carter Bryant is that dude. Watching him, he again, he's silky smooth. You can see his passing, his mid-range, his handle. The dude's just good. Uh, you know, listen, sometimes I think people overthink this. The guy is just good at basketball. He was meant to play basketball, and he's got a great head on his shoulders. He's... Uh, We've talked about it before. He was he was made for this moment. He's been ready. Carter Bryant is a big time player for the U of A, and it's easy to see why he was why he was targeted so early uh, by Tommy Lloyd because 
Again, he fits into that. He's an unselfish player, and just watching him, he just gets basketball. Then let's talk Anthony Del Orso. So many guys are always talking about, we need spacers. We need people that can shoot. Anthony Del Orso says, I am here for you. What I liked about Del Orso is that Del Orso hunts his shots. Del Orso goes after, uh, Del Orso goes after players, and uh, Del Orso goes and Here's the thing. Like people would say, well, Pella Larson shoots 44% from the field or whatever the case may be. But if Pella Larson missed a three and it was bounced right back to him for another open three, he's probably not taking it. Del Orso is definitely taking that. That's what a real shooter does. And again, not that Pella wasn't a good, good shooter, but he wasn't a traditional shooter. Del Orso wants his shots. You can tell he is good. He's going to get a lot of minutes this year, and I think he's going to shoot very well. Uh, you, it was easy to see that this is a player that um, – you know, he understands basketball. His ball handling is a little bit better, I think, than people thought it would be. And he is uh, he's perfect for what Arizona wants to do. Del Orso really, really showed a nice little game to himself. Then you also, uh, Mount Crevis was obviously out. But, you know, he was uh, he's expected to be okay. If he does play, Mount Crevis is, uh, we ob obviously know what Tommy Lloyd thinks of Mount Crevis. One guy, though, we got to talk about, Henry. Henry Vasar. Henry looked strong. Henry looked physical. Henry just looked the part of. And I think that's what's exciting about all of this is that Henry looked the part. And he looked stronger. He looked more physical. He made a three. He was uh, he was running the court, getting dunks. And on top of that, the one thing that he's always done very well is block shots. Henry looked good. It's hard not to be kind of excited by what Henry did because Henry is a, uh, you know, Henry is somebody I've been skeptical on, but Henry showed a lot of talent in this game. And if Arizona can get eight to ten minutes of solid uh, production from Henry Vasar, then they're going to be much, much better for it. Now, Conrad Martinez, he looked very good. My concern about him, though, is that when you start going into the Big 12 and players like uh, play, uh, things like that, all of a sudden it becomes a little bit more difficult because you're going against very, uh, you're going against really, really tough, bigger players than you. In a game like this, he's going to be perfect. But you can tell that he's got a good vibe. He's got a good feel for the game. There's no doubt about that. So, you know, Conrad, I don't know that I feel comfortable with him playing this year, but it is what it is. Uh, you know, Tommy Lloyd clearly likes him. Now, we're going to talk about uh, we're going to talk about a couple other players and the overall toughness for the team. But first, Fanduel, check it out. Fanduel, here's the deal. All right, now you can go. You'll get here's the deal with Fanduel. You'll get started with two hundred dollars in bonus bets when you place your first five dollar bet. That's Fanduel.com. Hey NFL fans, you can get started with a big return on Fanduel, America's number one sports book. So again, when you get a hunch in the middle of the game, when you get something like that, and you're like, man, I want to be able to go and I want to check out this game because I think I can make a little bit of money. FanDuel says, come to us, FanDuel.com. Check it out again. Another one of these ones where you will thank me later on it, FanDuel. Thanks for keeping it locked on, Wildcats, and making this your first listen of the day. All right, now, Emmanuel Stefan, I believe that he will redshirt, and I have no problem with him redshirting. He is a... Uh, he is a good ba he is a good basketball player, um, but he is uh, it's going to take him a little bit of time. He's very strong up front and uh, down low. He needs to get a little bit stronger. If he sticks it out, he's going to be really really good for Arizona. But what I'm most excited about for this team though is that you don't really see any dead weight. Last year you always kind of had a uh, last year you always kind of had some dead weight where you're like. Eh. How good really is this player? How good really is that player? You don't have a ton of that anymore. And again, it's a tough team. I think it's battle tested. It's ready to hop into the Big 12. And that's where it's exciting. With this team, you do know that you've got players that can make plays off the bounce. You've also got a toughness factor. And going into the Big 12, you're going to need all of that. So I think that's what's exciting. And it just kind of checks off more boxes than uh, than any of the previous year's teams have. Again, I get that it's a first game of this, uh, you know, it's an exhibition game against an overmatched foe. I get all of that, but it's hard not to be at least somewhat impressed by what you saw. Tommy Lloyd did a very nice job uh, reconstructing this roster, and we're going to see exactly how it does play out. But 
Come March, you got to be able to slow the game down. You got to be able to make free throws. You got to be able to get to the line. And uh, you got to be able to score. And this team appears to be able to do all of that. Okay, now, so that's your, uh, that's the show. We are going to next uh, time talk about Arizona, West Virginia. Get going. What exactly is going on with the next stuff? Because there is, I think it's going to be fascinating to see exactly how this does all play out. Arizona, West Virginia, what all happens. But on that note, as always, thanks for making Locked On Wildcats your first listen of the day. I'm your host, Mike Luke. Bear down and back the A.